Hey, what's up? John Shred here, and I may do this video a bit backwards. I've been testing this ProArt 4080 Super for about a week now, and I absolutely love it. And no, this video isn't sponsored by ASUS. I bought this card with my own cash from our friends over at Canada Computers. I'm working on my own full pro art content creator build, and well, this is the most expensive part. So what's in this video? Well, I'm gonna unbox it. We're gonna check out performance, both gaming and workstation. We'll do some Blender benchmarks for you 3D geeks out there. I'll compare the size to a 4070 Ti that I have, install it in my test bench system, overclock it like crazy, see what the audio levels are, check out the thermals and, compare it to some other 4080s and 4080 Supers. All right, do you wanna see it? Yes, John, show us the card. I, I told you, I'm doing this one backwards. As far as I can tell, it doesn't look any different from the 4070 Ti Pro Art that I reviewed. Check that one out here if you haven't seen it. I definitely know that the form factor is identical in size, whether it's the 4070 Ti, the 4080, or the 4080 Super, they are all the same size. ASUS did that on purpose with their Pro Art line so you could fit multiple GPUs in a motherboard and also just kind of fitting it into smaller cases. But the idea is that it's a workstation card and so multiple GPUs may be important to you. Also things to note about the design that you may not realize that, that ASUS did that other cards don't is that even like the fins here for the heatsink, they're all anodized black. Now that was a very uh, design focused decision that ASUS decided to do that's different from other cards. So if you want something that's black on black with this, with this touch of gold, I, like I say, this is still by far my favorite design right now. And the reason I bought this card is I will be putting it into a full pro art build. So please subscribe and stay tuned for that one. And I'll be doing that in the next few weeks. What about gaming performance? Now, the most common question that I got on the pro art 4070 Ti video I recorded was, can I use this card for gaming? Yes, 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 absolutely yes, you can. Even though this card is classified as workstation, it has the same exact GPU core as all the other 4080 Super cards out there. I'll show you some benchmarks right now using the NVIDIA Game Ready drivers to show you that it performs very, very similar. As you can see, it's an absolute monster beating out the MSI 4080 Super Expert in almost every test. Now the question you should be asking is, does this ProArt card still perform as well in games if you're using the studio ready drivers? Now, if you didn't know, Nvidia creates two sets of drivers, game ready drivers, which are fine tuned for games, and then studio ready drivers that are tuned for stability using workstation applications such as Adobe Creative Cloud and DaVinci Resolve. As a content creator first and a gamer second, I run the Studio Ready drivers myself. Does this affect my ability to play games? No, not at all. But today's your lucky day. I redid all of the gaming benchmarks using the Studio Ready drivers as well to see if there was a performance difference. Well, there you have it. In some tests, slightly slower, other tests a little bit faster. Really, it makes absolutely no difference in the performance. Instead, it does resolve specific bugs and issues with certain games or workstation applications, making both more stable. So unless I happen to have a specific problem with a game that the Game Ready drivers fix, I'm going to stick with the Studio Ready drivers. Okay, let's compare the size of this card to another card. I have here the MSI Ventus. Uh, this is a triple fan 4070 Ti. And I've already done this comparison before, probably see top down view. They are pretty much identical uh, in size. So, I mean, the fact that you can get 
a 4080 Super, that horsepower, that powerful card in the footprint of a 4070 Ti, amazing. Amazing, amazing. And I know a lot of you have decided to go with the Pro Art line, not even because of the, the cool design aspect, but just because of the form factor it may fit in your smaller cases. When it comes to testing workstation performance, I like the Blender benchmark myself. As you can see from this graph, it beats out the MSI 4080 Super Expert by two to 4%, which is what we were seeing on the gaming side as well. And yes, I did compare both the game ready and studio ready drivers in this Blender test, and they were pretty much identical. I've also compared the Blender scores from all the different series, the 4000 series cards that I have, everything from a 4070, 4070 Ti, 4080 Super and 4090, so you can see the bang for your buck difference. According to my test, the 4080 Super is approximately 35% faster than a 4070, 20% faster than a 4070 Ti, yet 35% slower than a 4090. Now that the 4080 Supers have taken a significant price drop from the original 4080s, the bang for your buck has increased, but we'll talk about that in a bit. All right, let's see how this card looks when installed in a mid-size game. Okay, this is my test bench. It's the same one I'm using now for, for a couple years in the Corsair 5000D. It's just a nice mid-size case. Okay, it's in. I mean, it's it doesn't really sag at all. It's not even... A, really a heavy card when you compare it to some others. But I mean, they do give you this fancy looking uh, GPU sag bracket. So, okay, there we go. It's not going anywhere. Let's get some power. Ta-da. Okay, let's turn this guy on. Considering that this is the smallest 4080 Super that you can buy, it did quite well. The GPU core peaked at 74.6 degrees Celsius when overclocked to the max. And at stock settings, it hit about 71.2 degrees Celsius. Now the memory peaked up at around 84 degrees Celsius when overclocked, but then on stock settings, it was more like 82 degrees Celsius. When comparing thermals to the MSI 4080 Super, they're actually quite comparable. Now, something to consider is that the MSI does have a vapor chamber and this doesn't, but this card does have three fans and the MSI only has two, but they are bigger at 120 mil. Now, as we'll see shortly, that affects audio levels. Now, I've started recording these segments. Please let me know in the comments if they have value for you to see kind of the spin and, and, and audio levels for cards. Check out how this one performs. To me, it sounds very similar to every other 4,000 card that I've tested. I mean, around 30%, you can't really hear the fans. Once you hit 50, you're like, oh, it's there. And then as you slowly increase, increase, it gets louder and louder when you know it's working under heavy loads. The difference with this card is that due to the smaller form factor, it did have to spin up the fans louder, keeping them around 66% under heavy load. Looking at that MSI 4080 Super Expert, it was able to keep the fans at around 30% while keeping the thermals at the same spot. That's where the two larger 120 mil fans really come into play. So the only downside with this Pro Art card is that it is a bit louder under large load. There isn't much to talk about in the lighting department because there are none, which I'm okay with. Due to the black design, whatever lights you might have inside your case, it will reflect on the card and it'll still add to the overall ambiance of your build. Considering that this card was not designed for overclocking, it did very well. I pushed the core by 210 megahertz, bringing it up to 2,910 megahertz under full overclocking. I also played with the memory clocks and I was able to increase them by 
uh, about 1250 megahertz up to 1500 megahertz, peaking at 13,000 megahertz. Now the performance increase from increasing the memory from 1250 to 500 wasn't all that much with about one to 3% difference. Overall, I saw it about a three to 7% increase over stock settings. So, I mean, it's good. Personally, I would say leave the card stock, especially it'll help with stability. But if you do want to overclock, you can. Okay, here we go. How much does this card cost as of May 2024? Well, Best Buy doesn't seem to carry it, but you can find a new egg for about $1,149 USD or $1,549 Canadian. And that's the same price that I bought it for at Canada Computers. They also carry it. Now, how does it compare to other 4080 Supers? Well, in the ASUS lineup, it's directly priced against their Tough Series and they've done that on purpose. They're two very different cards. The Tough card is, is way bigger with the biggest heatsink of all cards. It has water block compatibility, a little bit of RGB, and it has two HDMI ports. On the pro art side of things, you get the beautiful, absolute stunning design, smaller form factor, a little bit louder, all for the same price. Now let's compare it to the MSI 4080 Super Expert that I've been talking about, which is kind of the direct competitor. They are both the exact same price and they have a lot of similar features. They have a, a unique design, no RGB, one HDMI port. So I feel like they've kind of matched them very closely. But given the polarizing design of the MSI card, I'm going to lean towards the pro art from a design aspect. That being said, the MSI has a vapor chamber, larger, more quiet fans, but it is a bit bigger. So, I mean, do you want a smaller card that's a bit louder or a bigger card that's a little quieter? Oh, decisions, decisions. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you if you've made it this far in this video. These reviews take a hours and hours to produce. I mean, my channel only makes between $150 and $200 Canadian a month right now. So thank you if you had to watch a couple ads. I really appreciate it. Every dollar goes back into the channel so that I can buy more parts and make more videos like this one. What are my thoughts on this card? Well, I mean, I have ranted and raved about the design, so I'm still absolutely number one from a design perspective. The form factor is probably the most important piece, even though I personally haven't used it with either having, you know, dual GPUs together or putting it inside a smaller ITX case. The fact that I can get the speed and performance out of a 4080 Super, and I could, is amazing. Do I care that it's a bit loud? No, I mean, inch per inch, the performance, it's, it's worth it. If you want a creator card that is absolutely stunning, and works amazing in games, but also has incredible stability in workstation apps, this card is for you. Stay tuned over the next few weeks as I slap it into this pro art content creator build that I'm working on. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.